This is Trish Simner. I'm a voting member on the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute Antimicrobial Susceptibility Testing Subcommittee and a member of the CLSI Breakpoint Implementation Working Group. Today, I'm going to be going over Part C of the Breakpoint Implementation Toolkit that is freely available on the CLSI website. So I'm going to click on Part C, the Breakpoint Implementation Summary. This is a template for documenting results of your verification or validation study to update breakpoints. This document can serve as evidence of support of your study for any accreditation or regulatory body. This is a template that can be used to first outline your validation or verification study upfront, and then to complete the, the remainder of the document at the end of your study to sign off on the verification or validation prior to use of the updated breakpoints for clinical care. So I'm gonna walk through the template now. I have a pre-filled version that I prepared as an example for this video tutorial. And in this example, I'm providing a summary or a validation outline and then report of the validation of piperacillin tazobactam breakpoints for the enterobacterales on the NMIC 306 panels on the Phoenix AST system. This was considered a validation because our AST device and system is not up, does not have FDA clearance for the updated piperacillin tazobactam breakpoints with enterobacterales. So I'm doing a validation study for off-label use. So as uh, I was alluding to initially, you could use the, the, the first half of this document to kind of outline what you're going to do to validate the breakpoints on your system, what organisms you're going to use, what is your comparator, um, what are your isolates for reproducibility, et cetera. And so here I outlined the example, as I said, for piperacillin tizobactam and enterobacterales. I filled it out. The purpose is to validate the performance on the NMIC 306 panel for the organism group enterobacterales. My reference comparator will be the CDC FDA AR Bank Bit Set 2 reference broth microdilution results that were generated uh, by the CDC. And so if we go back to the Bit Toolkit, you can go to, um, to determine which bit set you would like to use for your validation or verification. There's this nice tool here. Um, that you can outline for the enterobacterales and piperacillin tazobactam, I would be using the breakpoint implementation toolkit too. There's a hyperlink here uh, to the CDC FDA AR Bank website where it lists all the isolates that are included in this bit for the verification or validation panel and um, allows you to add it to your cart to request these isolates free of charge from the CDC. So going back to our template, um, I would then fill it out further uh, in terms of what are the previous breakpoints or the current breakpoints that are on my system. So the old breakpoints that I'm currently using, and then the new break updated breakpoints that I would like to validate on my system. Um, and what was the source of this breakpoint? So in this case, this was the M100S32 uh, document that I used um, at the time of this validation study. Further down, you'll show it shows uh, what is the verification validation study under uh, test. So again, highlighting the panel. You'll also highlight the software version utilized by your system at the time of your validation. You'll outline the number of isolates. So in this case, because it's a validation, we're using 30 isolates from the CDC AR Bank Isolate Bit 2 set. Um, and again, our reference uh, result is the broth microdilution results for that panel of isolates. For reproducibility or precision, I chose five isolates that are also part of the bit set two. Um, these isolates can be identified as the isolates within this Excel pre-filled Excel spreadsheet under part F for the AR Bank data entry and calculations. Um, you can go into the Excel spreadsheet and under Piperacillin Tazobactam, which we could see here, you see the isolates from the bit set outline for bit set two. Any of the isolates highlighted in green are isolates that you can use for your reprodu reproducibility. 
And that was what was used um, for this particular validation. We also go over uh, the number of replicates. So in this case, we did them in the triplicate. Uh, we describe what our quality control is. In, in this case, E. coli ATCC25922. The frequency of testing is once weekly per our IQC key. And then we have all our procedures appropriate for this verification or validation or study, or for this in particular validation study outlined in our SOPs, both for our AST SOPs and our Phoenix SOP. So then you're, you've outlined your verification or validation studies by using the first half of this document. So then you're gonna go about and do those studies as outlined. And then you're gonna come back to your summary at the completion of your verification and validation, um, utilizing this really nice pre-filled Excel spreadsheet as part F of the bit um, that will then pre-populate. You're going to enter your values for your um, test under validation or verification, depending on what you're performing, and it'll it'll pre-fill in your essential agreement, your categorical agreement, and your categorical errors as appropriate based off of the data in comparison to the CDC error by facelets. You'll then take that information and plug it into your um, verification or validation summary. Um, in your accuracy table below here. So in this case, I outlined Picasso and Tazel Bactam. We have 80 isolates, 12 of which were susceptible. One was susceptible to those dependent. 17 were resistant based off the reference results. And then here are our calculations uh, based off of the validation data for our, um, for our AST device under test. So in this case, there were 20 to 30 isolates that were within categorical agreement with the CDC AR Bank isolates results, uh, which resulted in 93% categorical agreement, which is within our acceptability criteria as outlined above. And in addition, we had no very major errors, no major errors, and only two minor errors, which is 7% minor errors, which is within the um, threshold in general, people use a 10% cutoff for minor errors. However, it really is up to um, up to your um, laboratory director's discretion on how many minor errors they would want to accept. In this case, this validation study looks really good for validating Piperacillin-Tazobactam updated breakpoints for enterobacterialis on our NMIC 306 panel in the Phoenix system. In addition. Our reproducibility looked really good uh, for 100% when we performed these isolates and triplicates. And so at the completion of your validation or verification study, you're going to have your laboratory director sign off on this report um, that summarizes your studies so that you can implement the updated breakpoints prior to clinical care. So you're going to say, I have reviewed the validation data for accuracy and precision for the Piperacillin Tazobactam and Terobacterales breakpoint on the NMIC 306 panel, and the performance of the method is considered acceptable for patient care testing. Um, I was the laboratory director um, providing oversight for this validation, and so I signed off, dated, and uh, would sign this, print this off and sign it uh, to keep as a record of our validation. Uh, for uh, accreditation or regulatory bodies. You could also save your document. So when you're in the, um, the fillable, fillable form online, you can go ahead and save the filled version into your documents as appropriate. And this way you can have um, a, a, an electronic version uh, for your records as well. So that was it for the part C, the bit summary template. Again, this allows you to outline your validation or valid verification plan up front and to complete it at the end of your study to document and sign off on uh, that study prior to using the updated breakpoints for clinical care. Thanks so much for listening.